Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've been making a lot of Radeon 7 videos, and the more I think about it, I haven't really shown you guys how I undervolt the card. I know some of you guys in the comments have been asking me to do a tutorial or a guide for Radeon 7 undervolting, so I figured I would do that right now. You know, your Radeon 7 might be hitting that junction temperature, and you want to drop some degrees by doing a bit of undervolting. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to want you guys to do is install the latest drivers. As you guys are probably already aware, the first few driver releases were absolutely terrible for the Radeon 7. So to prevent any issues, just make sure you're running the latest drivers available. I've noticed personally throughout the various different driver releases, much better stability with the card. You know, I'm able to undervolt the card a whole lot better than I used to. So just to prevent any driver related issues, just make sure to update those drivers. In this video, I'm going to be using solely Wattman. I will have MSI Afterburner with Rivera Tuner showing you the stats just so that it's easier for you guys to see. But you by no means need to use Rivera Tuner. You can get everything done in Wattman and I'm going to show you guys how. So if you guys don't know how to get to Wattman, you simply right click on the desktop and click your AMD Radeon settings. Now, if this settings option doesn't pop up, I would recommend reinstalling the latest drivers and making sure you have the Radeon settings box checked off during the installation. You can also just press start and type Radeon and it should pop up right here. So once it's open, you're going to want to go into gaming, down to global settings down here, and this tab right here, global Wattman. And this right here is what we're going to be using. So this program at first can be a little intimidating, but it's actually quite simple to use. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of the options and settings on here. All right, so the first thing you're probably going to notice is this little open area right here. This area right here is where the program tracks what's going on with the card. So it's going to check your activity, your GPU frequency, memory, edge temperature, your fan RPM and your junction temperature, which is basically the hottest temperature in the die across all of the sensors. In this video, we're going to primarily be focusing on edge temperature and junction temperature. If you scroll down a bit more, you're going to find this little graph area down below. Now this is your frequency to voltage chart. This little chart down here is how you overclock Radeon 7 or pretty much do anything related to the core and the voltage. So as you guys can see, my card at stock sits at 1801 MHz and 1078 millivolts. Further down below, we have our power limit slider and our fan control. And lastly, all the way down here is our HBM2 control. Now, the voltage on your particular card may vary. All Radeon 7s come clocked at 1802 MHz on the core and 1100 MHz on the HBM2. Now, the thing that will vary is your voltage on the core. In my particular case, my card sits at 1078 millivolts. Your card might sit lower or it might sit higher. So your mileage may vary when it comes to undervolting. My particular settings will most likely not work for you. They may be similar, but you know, all cards are different. It's all the silicon lottery, essentially. Now, just because you have a high stock voltage doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be able to undervolt as well. All right, so now that we've gone through all of Wattman, I'm going to want you guys to open an Excel sheet or a open office calc sheet to be able to track our settings. As you guys can see right here, I've already done some testing prior to recording this video. You know, I've had this Radeon 7 for a while now, so I personally know how well it undervolts already, but I figured I would do this chart just so that you guys can uh, see it a little better, visualize what's going on with the card. So you personally by no means need to do a big old chart like this. At stock, 1802 MHz on the core, 1078 millivolts on the V core, and 1000 MHz on the HBM2, running Rage 2 at 1080p ultra settings. The power consumption is 351 watts out of the wall. So this is not a software based reading, this is using my kilowatt meter plugged straight into the wall. We are hitting 53 degrees Celsius edge temperature and 70 Celsius junction temperature. 
all of these numbers right here are after 20 minutes of gameplay. You guys personally don't have to let it run for that long if you don't want. I just wanted the radiator to warm up a bit to get more accurate temperature readings. Alright, so what I typically start off doing is I'll open Wattman and I'll keep it in the side like so. And then I'll open a game and keep it in borderless windowed mode or open some benchmark program that's going to load the GPU. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Alright, so what I personally like to use is Heaven Benchmark. So once you have Heaven Benchmark loaded, you're going to want to let it sit here for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so, half an hour, in order to let the card uh, warm up. That way you can keep track of your temperature changes better. We're going to want that junction temperature and that edge temperature to hit its peak. That way we know how much uh, temperature we're shaving off by doing the undervolt. A quick note I forgot to mention, make sure your fan RPM is set to a uh, locked percentage. That way when you do the undervolt, you actually know how much the temperature is dropping. Because if you're moving the fan speed around or if you have a fan curve set, it might skew your results. So just keep it at a set percentage. The next thing we're going to want to do is drop the voltage down by 10 millivolts. And we're going to do this until the card crashes. It might not let you drop it exactly 10 millivolts, but get it pretty close. So I'm going to go from 1078 to 1069. And I'm going to hit apply. So once I hit apply, I'm going to let the benchmark run for another 3 or 4 minutes. And if it doesn't crash, I'm going to do it again until it crashes. Alright, so I had to stop the recording briefly since the card started to artifact and I didn't want the recording to uh, get messed up. So as you guys can see, 960 millivolts is about as low as my particular card will go in Heaven Benchmark. Now, that gives me a pretty good idea of how low my particular card will undervolt at stock. Now, this is a synthetic benchmark, so it's not necessarily going to stress the GPU like a game would, but it gives me a rough idea of how low we can go. So as you guys can see right here, that 960 millivolt heaven benchmark gave me a pretty good idea of how low my particular card will undervolt. My particular card will undervolt all the way down to 972 millivolts, which is a massive 100 millivolt undervolt from stock. Now it is very, very important that you increase the power limit to 20%. You can undervolt your card without increasing power limit, but you're not going to be able to undervolt nearly as much. As you guys can see up here, I did try to do some undervolting without increasing power limit, and I can only hit 1038 millivolts before starting to hit some issues. But as you guys can see right here, once we start increasing power limit, we are able to hit lower and lower voltages. Now you're probably thinking, well, Geekmark, What's up with that? We're trying to reduce temperature. Is an increasing power limit going to do the opposite? Now that's a very interesting question since I myself wondered that at first. But as you guys can see, based off of some uh, real world testing, you can see that increasing power limit while reducing voltage will still reduce power consumption, even with the power limit increase, which is just awesome. You will also notice lower temperatures as well. Now, as you guys can see from down below, using the power play tables to increase the power limit, we are able to undervolt the card even more. So I managed to get the core down to 938 millivolts, which is just absolutely insane. That's a massive 140 millivolt undervolt. And we are consuming about 60 watts less, which is also massive. Um, our edge temperature has dropped 10 celsius and we've dropped nearly 15 celsius from junction temperature so i would definitely highly highly recommend undervolting your card now you don't have to go as far as using the power play tables like it did down below but even just using the stock 20 percent power limit you're still going to notice a massive massive difference all right guys so to sum it all up you either open a synthetic benchmark like i did down here to get a rough idea of how low your card's gonna undervolt. And then you open a game and do some actual testing with the game open and your power limit set to 20%. Or you can simply skip the synthetics and go straight to testing the games. Either way will work just fine. So just remember, 
once you start going pretty low in your voltages make sure to increase your power limit to maintain stability and it also wouldn't hurt to keep track of your settings like i did right here and that's pretty much it guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video i will leave some clips at the end of this tutorial showing the card running at stock and also the card running with a undervolt that way you guys can see that it doesn't really affect performance at all i hope this video helped you guys out thanks for watching peace